Uh, good morning. Good morning. This is the first day of the Queer Agenda road trip. We don't have a tripod up here yet. We're really learning as we go here. <laughs> but here we are in beautiful Washington State on the road. Look at the rain. It's so idyllic. We have about six and a half hours to go to Boise and this might be our calmest day of this entire trip. Last episode, you met the Society of Lucky Mothers and got a sneak peek at some of the anti-LGBTQ legislation across the country. In today's episode, we made our way to Idaho, where we're exploring fascism and failed House Bill 375, which would have targeted gender-affirming care for transgender youth. Javier Smith. I am on the board of directors, uh, the board member of the community center. Uh, my main job is to keep the toilet scrubbed and the floors clean. My goal is to, uh, when kids come in, I try to find out if they know somebody who has in their, the, what's the three pillars in our society, uh, their, their religion or church, their family, or their school or education system that they can come out to and talk to. And if not, we try to find them one. I try to work on their self-esteem, that's the biggest thing right there for anybody, gay, straight, bi, whatever. If they can work on their self-esteem and sense of self-worth, uh, then that makes a world of difference in uh, their ability to survive in this world. One of the things I do is tell them, it's like, you know, what is it you can change in your life? Some stuff you can, you know, for example, there's an asteroid coming to us from outer space. What are you going to personally do about it? Not much, okay? I mean, if, if you want to run around in circles, scream and shout, you know, you can do that, but what good is it going to do? You know, so there's, you know, don't get stressed about things you can't control. Be concerned about them, be aware of them, and work on them long term. Understand there's a problem there, but do what you can to protect yourself, okay? Um, uh, work what you can in your daily life to protect yourself, but uh, I can't help each and every one of them. All I can do is give them the tools they need to try and uh, uh, get by in life. You'll see these, these bills pop up, not just in Idaho, but across the, the rest of the U.S., and that's because there's uh, some group of folks who are testing the water, seeing what they can get out there, just like they did back in 1994. During that time, we had the uh, uh, No on One campaign. I don't know if you guys are familiar with that. It was an anti-gay initiative. That was kind of the watershed moment for the gay and lesbian community here in Boise. It was in the early 90s when Idaho had an initiative on ballot. It was known as Proposition 1. It was an anti-LGBTQ initiative. Not wanting to designate or recognize with special rights. You know, what are we saying? Well, human rights. Human rights are not special rights. They belong to everyone. But it was very much a targeting of the gay community with it. Well, fortunately, the populace reacting to that, so that's when the Ada County Human Rights Task Force coined the phrase, not in my town, not in my state, Idaho is too great for hate. Populists rallied to that, defeated the proposition or the initiative at the ballot. I've sometimes questioned if that initiative were on the ballot today, would it get the same result? When I ran, I was fairly um, skeptical about how woke might be. Um, when I first walked in that building, um, I would have to say that I did not expect much of a welcome, and I was lucky enough to have had a Speaker of the House tell them that they had to be nice to me. <laughs> and so I think I had a better experience than a lot of people who were the first openly LGBT person in their um, in their um, elected, you know, legislature. And yet, at the same time, it was you know, it wasn't even on the radar to start to push um, pro-LGBT um, legislation because at that point we were really, we had just defeated an anti-gay initiative that had almost passed. And our our sense was like, you know, we gotta, I've gotta go in and like be that queer person that makes them think that queer people are okay. As we saw in the legislative session in 2020, anti-trans legislation, that was just brutal. It was such an interesting juxtaposition for us, because keep in mind that was also the start of COVID 
and we went into a stay-at-home order. So literally, I'm sitting at home at my home computer watching the legislative session, listening to the rhetoric. I wrote an opinion piece that was published by the local press that we had to recognize that there were two viruses, one that we could not see that was requiring us to stay home and one that we could hear, and it was a virus of hate that was filtering through our legislature. So I think the hardest thing is the fact that instead of getting better, the state has gotten harder and worse. The legislature has gotten worse. The legislature has gotten more extreme. Um, I would say the language is more violent, more hateful. The bills that have been proposed are more harsh and more, I would say they're almost like pieces of terrorism in the form of legislation to criminalize a person's um, ability to um, use hormone blockers or surgery to be who they really are, to allow them autonomy over their bodies. This is just a trend that we're obviously seeing in the nation and to see that happen here so early, that was last year, um, is really difficult. And we avoided passage of that bill because there was one person in there who had long been compassionate and was willing to take, take that on and make sure that bill was not heard um, in the Senate side. And so those relationships I had built, I could make a phone call, um, others could make phone calls, and that person would stand for us. That person might not be there next year. Several of those proponents were recently defeated in their last primary. Not all of them. So those voices of hate are still there. These are voices of hate that are also trying to capitalize on fear. Fear of anything that, or anyone who is different. We have a beautiful quote in the memorial by Billie Jean King. Basically, she just says, yeah, sexual orientation, gender identity, get over it. Get over the differences. And that really becomes our rallying cry. You know, as part of that history lesson, so it was 2002 when the memorial opened. The only quote that caused controversy was Billie Jean King's quote. The then chaplain of the Idaho legislature had a severe problem with it. The then mayor of Boise said, get over it. It's who we are. So there are those voices of goodness. We're just needing them to amplify. And we've seen the violent rhetoric. We've seen the terrorist attempts in northern Idaho on our pride festival. We've seen just this incredible increase um, in the danger with which a lot of people live because so many people are moving to this state simply because it is so conservative and so um, very much that place that might secede or become the anti-gay Christian white nationalist heaven. So I have to ask myself, so many years later, when pride parades were happening throughout the United States, why did 31, the Patriot Front, feel that they would be welcomed to come to Coeur d'Alene, Idaho? Have we forgotten? Have we forgotten the devastating impact when white nationalists, neo-Nazis felt comfortable not only living, but acting within the state of Idaho? My fear though, as we had noted with some of our legislators, that they will stand in solidarity with the white nationalists. What becomes disturbing as a historian is there was a generation that fought fascism, defeated it. And now to see members within a U.S. community that will hold the symbols of fascism, worse yet, the actions of fascism, to target specifically members within the United States or within their given communities. There is a real comfort in our work in being able to draw from history. Because while some may talk about alternative truth, truth is truth. History is born from a truth. My name is Timothy Gwill. Fascism is an amorphous term. 
uh, much like the term conspiracy theory, um, that academics can't seem to agree on exactly what the definition is because it can come in so many forms. Um, at its most root level, uh, fascism is a, it emanates from the right. It's, it's an inherently a, a right wing movement. Um, and it is authoritarian in nature. It is looking at the idea that uh, it's really the cult of the leader. So the a fascist movement will take on, take on the characteristics of its leader, usually. Um, and what it really looks at is, is this mythical idea of the past. It's ultra-nationalist and believes the nation was somehow better before and isn't now. And that the reason it isn't great now is because it's been infiltrated by the them, the us versus them dynamic. That dynamic uh, really paints uh, progressive movements and liberal movements, the left, as those who have come in and destroyed or are trying to destroy um, these conservative values. The, the role of othering in fascist movements right, uh, really has to deal with the idea that we have to, it, this is us, right? We're strong and they, them, are trying to take that away from us, our traditional values, and, 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 and destroy us from the inside out. And so we can see that kind of paranoia as being directly related to the groomer paranoia that's happening now in things like the don't say gay bill. The don't say gay bill is functionally saying the same thing. If, if we allow teachers to say that they're gay or say that trans people exist, somehow that's going to corrupt the youth. Patriot Front is a, is a perfect example of this idea that fascists inherently believe that diversity and inclusion is a threat to their way of life. Patriot Front um, stated, states basically that uh, America and North America was conquered by Western culture and whites and therefore they deserve to own all of the land, right? And that they need a, what they call a hard reset, right? To combat and to, to wipe away all the corruption that's happened. And what do they mean by corruption? They mean things like the LGBTQA movement, right? Is, is that that somehow, you know, weakened America, which would be another example of, they, they're using the same idea of the white replacement theory, right? Is that if we let people in, then we lose, we lose. A lot of the anti-gay anti bill, right, is saying if we expose children to, to the idea, right, if we show them that, these, that trans people exist, yeah. queer people exist, gay, bi people exist, that somehow they will be. Right. Well, that doesn't make any sense because there are thousands, millions of books, like just fictional books that have straight characters, TV shows and things like that, and that doesn't turn people who are gay straight, so why would it go the other way, right? But if, if you have this anxiety and you see it as a fearful, dangerous thing to you, right, you are go going to see a misrepresentation of reality and a misrepresentation of, a, of, of people who, who exist now and have always existed. We cannot leave issues or concepts as abstracts. We have to translate them as people. So with any issue, it's a face and a voice. That, that othering and that distillation of people into you mis misunderstood representations. Um, the only way to combat that is to have people be able to explain the complexities of their lives. That that that, that boiled down version of them is not reality. That, that reality is the complex experiences that we all have. Because how does injustice begin with words? We do a lot of programming on why words matter. And those words that become a hook in someone where all of a sudden more and more can get in deeper and deeper, drawn in to the point that maybe they don't even recognize where they started. What's the problem when we hear something enough? We begin to believe it. We have to remember that, that, that fascist movements start out in healthy democracies. They start out as social and political movements. Hitler was elected in an election, right? A democratic election. That is my greatest fear, is if it becomes so frequent and commonplace that we become complacent, no longer hearing it or seeing it for what it is. Does fascism exist today? Will we know it when we see it?
After getting a better understanding of Idaho's legislative and social landscape, it was time for the first mom presentation at the community center. Hi everyone, my name is Rachel Escoto. I'm from Snohomish, Washington, and I'm part of an organization called the Society of Lucky Mothers, and I want to welcome you to an evening here with us. <laughs> uh, nobody came. <laughs> We're here all by ourselves. To our first uh, event. But hey, we're That's gonna... okay. The first, there's no, there's no place to go, but yep. no. there's no place to go from here, but uh, <laughs> we're gonna go to downtown Boise and bring our Boise, 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 and bring our table, and maybe some people will want to decorate our quilt there. I thought this quilt was like somebody was knitting. <laughs> With our first mom presentation, a bust, we made our way to the Balcony Club, a local queer bar. Along our journey, the Society of Lucky Mothers is creating a quilt project, gathering notes of pride from people in each state. The Balcony Club offered us a glimpse into Boise's queer community and gave us a real chance to kick off the quilt project. Well, tell me your name and what you do here and your role at the Balcony Club. Uh, my name is Christy and I'm the manager here at the Balcony Club and uh, my job is to make sure that the queer people in Boise have a safe place to come and have fun. So my name is Maricela Pesina and I live in a town about 30 miles west of Boise, but this is one of my second homes because my child is of the LGBT community and I come and I support them and all of their friends that are performers because they have a lot of um, non-supportive family. So I'm here to give them um, enthusiasm to clap for them to give them tip money as much as I can. My name is Riley Burrows. I'm a local producer and drag queen here so I produce shows and perform in shows here every weekend. My name is Malia Gemini. I'm a performer here at the Balcony Club. I produce and uh, run a weekly drag show here in Boise here at the club called Tropicana Nights and it is all Latinx queer performers. Um, it's also a variety show so there's four queens, one drag king, and one burlesque performer. Uh, we like to keep it mixed here in Boise. Rachel, what have you found? I found a lot of shit, you guys. Okay, so I just learned that um, when the court overturned Roe, these guys put up a huge banner hanging off over here so everybody in the intersection can see, right? And these people over here complained, the Fork Restaurant. And so they had to take it down, but here's what they did instead. They drew a uterus. Wait. They drew a uterus flipping the birdie at the people at the fork. And they painted all of these so everybody on this side can see that they dissent. I take this job very seriously. Um, uh, especially in Idaho, we get a lot of um, hate, unfortunately. Um, and so just knowing that queer people can come here and be safe and, like I said, have fun, it, it means a lot to me. It's, it's more than just a job. I really, these people are my family. We have a very strong community here, though, versus a lot of the Idaho hate going on. So as small as we are, we are all very tight-knit and all have each other's backs really well. Like this lovely lady said before, earlier, she's my mom, um, very supportive. She, um, a lot of performers in the community really appreciate the fact that uh, she's here, that she, it definitely doesn't fill the void that a lot of parents leave to the, with their children who, you know, come out and they're not always accepted right away, sometimes not accepted or will never will be. Um, but I'm really proud and I'm very, I'm proud and I'm very thankful that I'm like able to share you with everybody here and that everybody gets to feel an ounce of love, you know, from you. Cause like I consider myself super extremely lucky that you do come out and support me all the time, weekly with even for, Oh gosh, see, I'm not going to cry. It's just sweat, it's not tears. Um, but thank you so much for like, even down to like helping me with my costumes and things like that. So um, yeah, and I just, you have a lot of queer people behind you here, you know? You got the queer vote here in uh, Caldwell and Boise. So um, yeah, <laughs> you're going to make me cry. <laughs> okay, we are on day three of the road trip and we are on our way to Salt Lake City. On our way. 
Boise, it's been real. Boise, it's been great. Thanks for joining us. We'll see you next time in, in Salt, Salt Lake, Lake City. City.